guys, my name's Dave and welcome to another Guitar Zero Hero song tutorial. In this lesson, I'm gonna teach you how to play Black Summer by the Red Hot Chili Peppers, which is an awesome track. John Frushanti is back in the band and he did not disappoint. There's some awesome guitar parts and a really cool guitar solo in this song. I'm gonna teach you all the guitar parts that you need to know. Now in terms of tone, I've recorded everything in this lesson using the Boss Katana 100 Mark II. If you want that tone patch, I'll leave that in the link in the description below. John Frushanti personally is one of the top three guitarists that influenced my own guitar journey. So it's so awesome to see him back in the band. Now for the basics of this song, you will need to flat tune your guitar. So that basically means that every single string will go down one half step. So the low E to E flat, A to A flat, D to D flat, G to G flat, B to B flat, and the high E string to E flat. Once you flat tune your guitar, we're good to go. So let's jump into the lesson. All right, so I'm gonna start by teaching you all the rhythm guitar parts, and then I'll teach you all the lead guitar parts in the second half of this video. Let's start off with the intro. Now, for the rhythm guitar tone, I'm using the neck pickup. I've got my tone set at about eight, volume set at about 10, and on my amp settings, I'm using clean channel, and I've just got a chorus pedal and a bit of reverb. If you wanna check out my Boss Katana Mark II tone patches for this song, I'll leave that in the description below. So for the intro, it's quite simple. We're just riffing on an E minor chord shape like this. So it's an E minor bar chord shape, and this is one line of tab here. So for that E minor shape, your index fingers on the seventh fret of the fifth string, ring and pinky on the ninth frets of the fourth and third, and middle finger on the eighth fret of the second string. So with this E minor bar chord shape, we're just gonna start by strumming this on the one beat and the end beat after two. So one, two and three on the and four end i'll just be plucking the fourth string by itself and four and so one and two and three and four and for the next bar you'll lift your pinky finger you'll pluck the second string so the eighth thread of the second string hammer on with your pinky finger lift it and hit that eighth fret one more time so after that, we'll go back to the bass notes. So we'll just stroke the fifth and fourth strings twice. After then, we'll do a downstroke on the fourth and third strings, but then you'll hammer your pinky finger back into place. And then lift your pinky finger, hit the open third string. So that little chunk. And you're gonna end by lifting your ring finger, striking the fourth and third strings, and hammering your ring finger into place and that bar in total. For this intro, we're just doing all down strokes. There's no up strokes here. So far for the first two bars. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. For the third bar, we're just going to stay on this E minor shape. We're gonna strum the chord and then go bass note and then the higher strings. Hold that out and then bass note, higher strings and end on the bass note. So one, two, and three, and four, and. And then for the final bar, what I do is I move my ring finger down one string. So it's now on the ninth fret of the third string. Keep your middle finger where it is. You're gonna strike the second and third strings together, slide up two frets and slide back down two frets. Like that. And then two strikes on the open sixth string and then do that slide up and down again, and then end with one more strike on the four beat. So one and two and three and four. And that's it for the intro, which sounds like this. Notice how everything is a downstroke. Next, we move on to the verse, which is quite simple. It's just chords. We have two lines of tab here. We're gonna stay on that E minor chord shape. Now, we're just gonna strum this with a down, 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 or a one and two and three and four and. Then we go to a G. We're gonna use the exact same strumming pattern. One, two, and three, and four and. For our third bar, we're gonna go to a D bar chord shape. So it's a fifth string major bar chord shape like this. Now you can play it with your three fingers like this on the seventh fret, but 
it's much easier to play these bar chords higher up the neck with your ring finger just firing across the fourth, third and second strings. And then your index finger just hitting that root note on the fifth fret. Now we're gonna be using the same strumming pattern that we had in the previous two bars, but on the last two down strums for this bar, we're then going to an A bar chord, which is the same as that G, but just up two frets. So one and two and three and four and... And then we go back to an E minor for one full bar of that strumming pattern. For the second line of tab, we then go to an A minor bar chord. So it's the same as that A, but we have our middle finger lifted. So this is played for one strumming pattern. One, two, and three, and four, and. Then we go back to our E minor, but our strumming pattern is gonna change a tiny bit here. We're gonna hold out for one beat and then three eighth note strums. So two and three. And then on the four beat, we go down to our D. So one and two and three and four and. And then for the third bar, we go up to a G bar chord shape. So it's up a 10th and 12th fret. Same shape as the D, just up here. We're gonna play that for our regular strumming pattern. One and two and three and four and. And then back to our D for one strumming pattern. One and two and three. So it's just all chords here, and we're gonna be using that one strumming pattern basically throughout all the bars except for that sixth bar. So all together for the verse. Okay, next we have verse variation one, which is very similar to verse one, but there's just one minor change. So this occurs on the third bar. So from our D to our A shape, we are no longer playing that regular strumming pattern. We're just strumming each chord twice on the beat. So one, two, three, four, like that. So that's the only difference between verse and verse variation one, that third bar. So all together. Next we get to the break. Now there are two guitars going on here. One is the rhythm that just continues on with that same tone. And then there's also a lead guitar part that John Frushanti plays. I'll teach you that part later in the video, but let's continue with the regular rhythm. So we're going to go down to a C bar chord shape like this, down at fifth and third frets. So it's similar to that D, just down two frets. We're gonna strum this chord on the beat twice. So one, two, and then a G chord shape, three, four. And then we're gonna go up to our D shape. We're gonna strum this twice at eighth notes. One and mute. On the end bit after two, we then slide up and hit the E chord. So it's an E major chord. We're not playing an E minor chord anymore. So we're gonna strum that on the end bit after two, hold that out, and then strum it two more times. So one and two and three and four and. So the first two bars. Then we go back to a G bar chord shape. We're gonna strum this three times. So one, two, and move it up to an A. Do the exact same thing. Three and four and. And then we go up to our E. And we're gonna strum it with the same strumming pattern that we had in the second bar, except it's all E. So one, two, and three, and four, and. That's it for the break, which sounds like this. Okay, so next we get to verse number two. Now for the first half of verse number two, we're playing the verse that we already learnt earlier. Now for the second half of verse two, we're gonna call this verse variation two. 
and there's some minor changes here. Now, instead of going and ending on our D chord like we usually do in the verses, after that G bar chord, we're gonna go up to an E slash G sharp shape. So to play that, you just, from the G chord, move your index finger up to the 11th fret, pinky goes on the 14th fret of the fourth, ring finger goes on the 13th fret of the third, and middle finger goes on the 12th fret of the second string. So that's our E slash G sharp, and we're going to hold on to this chord for two bars. And we're gonna strum it like this. One, two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and. And that's it for the second half of verse two, which sounds like this in total. Next we move to the chorus which has two lines of tab and we've already learnt the first half of the chorus. It's exactly the same as the break that we learnt earlier. Now the second line of chords is almost identical except for that third bar in that second line of tab. Instead of going from our G major chord shape to our A major, we're going to go D major down to our A major and then back up to our E. And that's the only difference between the second line of tab to the first line of tab. So the chorus in total. After that first chorus, we have the solo. So I'll teach you that later. After the solo, there's a final verse. Now the final verse is the same as the other verses, except at the very end, we're just gonna hit our D chord and hold it out for the full bar. Then there's the final chorus, which is the same as the previous chorus. And those are all the rhythm parts to this song. Okay, so now let me teach you all the lead guitar parts. Let's start with the break lead. Now, in terms of guitar tone, I'm still using the same settings on my guitar. So I still am using the neck pickup. I still have my tone knob set at about eight and volume at 10. On my amp, I'm still using a clean amp channel and I still have a little bit of chorus and I've still got reverb. But what I'm adding to this is a phaser pedal and I'm also adding a little bit of a Tube Screamer overdrive. Now there's two lines of tab here. We're gonna start with our index finger barring across the 10th frets of the first and second string. We're gonna strike those two strings, but then hammer on your ring finger onto the 12th fret and hit that double stop again. So the 10th fret of the first and second string. So that little phrase. Then you'll shift positions. So middle finger will now go on the 10th fret of the second, index finger on the ninth fret of the third. We're gonna hit the third and second strings and do a similar thing where we hammer on with our ring finger onto the 11th fret this time of the third string. And then lift your ring finger and hit those two strings again. So that little chunk. And then we're gonna shift this position down two frets. So seventh and eighth fret, we're gonna do the exact same thing. And then with your ring finger, go down to the ninth fret, hit that and slide out. And in total for the first bar. After that lead in, we then start with the C power chord. So just index on the third fret of the fifth string, ring and pinky on the fifth frets of the fourth and third. You're gonna strike that. And then with your ring finger, hit the fifth fret, slide up to the seventh, and then bar the fifth fret with your index finger of the fourth and third strings and hit that. So, and so far. And then you'll do the exact same thing except one string up. So we're gonna be playing a G power chord shape, and then the slide, and the bar of the fifth frets. So this bar. And then what I do is I move my index finger up to the seventh fret, keeping it on the fifth string here. You'll bar that index finger across that seventh fret, 
and you'll hit the third string and you'll hammer on to the ninth with your pinky or ring and then let it go hit that third string again and then hit the fourth string and hammer on and so far and then you're going to get into our E chord position so the E bar and strum it hold that out for a beat and then two more strums and that bar in total and then at the end you can do a quick little two mutes if you want to as well but that's not entirely necessary and so far for the first line of tab for our second line of tab you're going to slide your ring finger up to the 14th fret of the fifth string with your index finger bar across the 12th frets of the fourth and third string hit the 12th fret and then hit it again but hammer on to 14th and then lift it and hit that 12th fret again so and then we'll slide from 14th up to 16th take this exact same shape so your index finger will now be barring across the 14th frets of the fourth and third strings and then you'll pluck the third fourth and then the third again but hammer on and pull off to the 16th so and then end on the 16th fret of the fourth string and slide out so that lick and the bar in total and then for the final bar we go back to our e major now i'm going to be playing it with my three fingers barred across like this but you can just bar it with your ring finger because in the actual song you can actually hear that seventh fret of the first string ring out when John Frushanti plays that final E to end this. So the final bar and the break lead in total. So now we get to the guitar solo. Now in terms of tone, I'm still using the same guitar settings. So neck pickup, tone at eight, volume at 10. On my amp, I'm now using a crunch channel, I'm using reverb, and I'm also using an overdrive pedal. So it's actually quite a simple setup here. Now there's five lines of tab. We're gonna start with the seventh fret of the fifth string, and then hit it twice. Fifth fret of the fourth, then seventh fret with your ring, and slide up to ninth. So that run. With your index finger here, have it barred across the seventh fret of the fourth and third. Because that way we can then hit the third string and hammer on to the ninth and then do the exact same thing with the fourth string. Like so. And the first run in total. Now after you hammer on to that ninth fret of the fourth string, you can then lift your index finger from that bar. Then after that we're going to go ninth fret, eighth fret, seventh fret, hold that out, and then seventh fret, fifth fret, then you'll go up to the seventh fret of the second string, hit that and do a half bend. So it's a very slight bend, bend and release, down to fifth fret and then go to the seventh fret of the fourth and slide up to ninth. So that whole lick. At this point, I'll bar my index finger across the seventh fret of the fourth and third strings again. Hit the seventh fret of the third, then ninth fret with your pinky finger, then ninth fret of the fourth string with your ring, but then you'll do a quick slide down to seventh and pull off the fifth. So it's all in one smooth motion. Slide down and pull off. Like that. And then end with two plucks of the seventh fret of the fifth string. And that little lick. And in total for the first line attack.
For the second line of tab, we'll take our ring finger, go to the seventh fret of the fourth string. You're gonna hit that, and you're gonna do a really slight bend. It's a quarter bend here. Just enough to get it out of tune, but not enough to actually go up to the next pitch. And then down to fifth fret, and then hit the seventh fret again. But then you will bend up full tone and then with your pinky finger seventh fret of the third and then fifth fret of the second string and this bar in total after that for our next bar you'll then take the seventh fret of the fourth string have it pre-bent hit it and then release it and then pull off to the fifth fret and then down to the seventh fret of the fifth string and then end on the fourth fret of the fourth string. So this second bar. Then we go up to the fifth fret of the fourth string. And then a quick up down stroke. Another down stroke. And then seventh fret and bend up a full tone and release. So this third bar. And then for the fourth bar, we're gonna hit that seventh fret. And then hit it another two times. Hit it again, but then slide up to the 16th fret. And then 14th fret of the third, and then 15th fret of the second. So the final bar. And the second line of tab in total. Okay, now for the third line tab, we go to the 14th fret of the 4th string, and then hit it twice, 12th fret of the 3rd, 14th fret, 12th, back to 14th, and bend up for full time. So, now with your pinky finger, you'll actually need to bar across the 15th frets of the 1st and 2nd string. As you have that note held from that previous bend. And then you'll hit the first string, second string, and then hit the third string and release back down. So. After you've released for the third bar, you'll hit that note again, and then hit it again, 12th fret, 14th fret of the first string, do a half bend and release. So it's just a small bend, down to 12th, and then back to 14th fret of the third string with a full bend. Hold that up there, and then 12th fret of the first string, and then hit that third string, release, pull off, and then, and then 14th fret of the fourth string twice. So from the third bar, And the third line of tab and toe. For the fourth line of tab, we go the 14th fret of the third string, hit that, hold it, and 12th, back to 14th, and we're gonna bend up a full tone, pinky finger on the 15th fret of the second, and then index finger on the 12th fret of the first. That's all as you're bending that third string. Like that. For the second bar with your 14th fret of the third string still bent, hit it again, release, and then you'll pull off to the 13th fret here, not the 12th. And then 14th fret of the fourth string twice, and then 11th fret of the third string. So that second bar. Hit the 12th fret, and then we're gonna do a down, up, down, down on the same note. And then with your free middle finger, go onto the 12th fret of the second string, hit that. And all the whilst holding that 12th fret of the third string, so. 
and then end with the third and second string again one more time. So the third bar. And then with your pinky finger go to the 15th fret. And that's gonna be barring across the 15th frets of the first and second string. And then pluck third, second, first strings, and then third and second. So the fourth line of tab. For the fifth line of tab, we then go to the 13th fret of the third string with your middle finger and index finger will bar across the 12th fret of the first and second. So we're gonna start with that third string, hit it twice and then the second string and then end with the third and second string one more time. And then for the next little chunk, third, second, and first string. And then for the next chunk, second, first, and then up to the 16th fret, but it's gonna be a really slight bend. And we're gonna end up the 16th fret of the third string and bend that and cut it off at the end of the solo. So in total for the fifth line of tab, And that's it for the main solo, which sounds like this in total. Alright, now the final thing I'll teach you is the outro lead guitar. Now in terms of tone, I basically just have the rhythm tone, but I've added a tiny bit of overdrive to this to make it cut through a little bit more. So we're going to start with our ring and pinky finger on the ninth frets of the fourth and third strings. There's five lines of tab here for the outro. Our picking pattern here is going to go fourth, third, and then we have a three note pattern, which is fourth, fourth, third, and we're going to repeat that twice. So. And I'm just hitting this with all down plucks. Now for the next bar, it's almost the same, except we lift our pinky finger and index finger will be on the seventh fret of the third string. Same picking pattern. Then you're gonna bar your index finger across the seventh fret of the fourth and third strings. The picking pattern's almost the same, except for the last three plucks. So we start off the same way. But for the last three plucks, it's fourth string, third string, and then with your pinky finger go back onto the ninth fret. And then we get back into our original position. And the fourth bar is the same as the first bar. So the first line of tab. For the second line of tab, you'll lift your ring finger Keep your pinky finger where it is and index finger will go on the seventh fret of the fourth string. For this picking pattern, it'll almost be the same as our regular one except for the last three plucks again. So we start off the same way. Then we go fourth string, lift your pinky finger, hit the seventh fret of the third and then back to the ninth fret with your pinky. So. ring finger on the ninth fret of the fourth string. We're gonna go fourth string, third, fourth, fourth, third, fourth, third. So. And then you're gonna take your ring and pinky finger up to the 10th fret of the first and second string. Now what you wanna do with your index finger is actually touch all the other strings as well. 
whilst you're fretting these two notes. And that way you can strum all the strings and just the first and second string. Of the ring note. And we're going to just strum this with all down strums at eighth notes. One, two, three, four, and, and then lift your pinky finger, put your middle finger down on the ninth fret of the first string. So the second line of tap and tone. Now the third line of tab is almost identical to the first line of tab with one exception and that's in the third bar. The first half is the same and then your middle finger go up to the 8th fret of the 2nd string then down to the 7th with your index finger barring and then 7th fret of the 3rd and with your pinky finger ninth fret of the 3rd. So that 4 note run at the end and the bar in total. That's the only difference between the third line of tab and the first line of tab. For the fourth line of tab, it's almost the same as the second, except for that final bar, instead of moving our middle finger down to that ninth fret, we're gonna stay on this 10th fret. So we're gonna strum this for two bars effectively. One, two, three, four, for the fifth line of tab, we then go down and put our middle finger on that ninth fret of the first string. And we're gonna strum this for two bars, except for the second bar, we're only gonna strum it seven times and not eight. So there's just a little pause and then we end on our last strum, which is the ring and pinky finger on the 12th fret of the third and second strings. So the final line of tab. So that's all for the outro and it sounds like this. to this song. Again, if you have a Boss Katana Mark II, then I'll leave the tone patches that I've used in this lesson down in the description below. So now I'll be doing a full playthrough of the song and I'll have my good friend Eric lending his awesome vocals to this playthrough. Feel free to play this back as many times as you'd like to, to practice, play along to, and see how you go.
Thanks so much for watching. If you've enjoyed this lesson, then I know you'll absolutely love these other lessons too. So hit the link here, or if you want to grab a copy of my free guitar ebook, then head over to guitarzerodihero.com or click the link here. Thanks so much, and I'll see you guys next time on Guitar Zero to Hero. Cheers.